He rang the doorbell, but there was no reply. He rang again. A cat leapt down from the wall and rubbed itself against his ankles, mewing plaintively. Ned heard another plaintive sound from within, a low, whining chant that he could not understand. He pushed against the door, which swung open on its hinges. The cat jumped in ahead of him. "'Portia! Are you there? Portia! It's Ned!' The chanting grew louder. Ned saw a light shining through the kitchen hatch and walked round into the dining room. "'Portia, it's me! What are you doing here?' A black cloth had been hung over the mirror above the sideboard, and on a low stool sat Peter, his jacket and tie ripped. His eyes were cast down to the floor, and he was chanting a Hebrew prayer. "'Peter? It's me. You remember me?' Peter lifted his eyes. "'Ned. I remember you. It's Ned. "'Where are Portia and Albert? Gone. They are gone. My brother's son is dead. Did you know?' Where? Where have they gone? Who knows? Ned left the room and ran upstairs. Clothes trailed across the floor, wardrobes hung open, bottles of shampoo and tubes of toothpaste had fallen into the basin under the bathroom cabinet, and the floor was littered with pill bottles and combs and bars of soap. They had left in a hurry, in a terrible panic. Did they think they had something to fear from him? From Ned? He rushed downstairs again. The old man's moaning was driving him crazy. "'Where did they go? They must have told you!' Peter said nothing, but continued to rock backwards and forwards, singing his prayers. Ned went into the kitchen to find some milk. The light of the fridge shone onto the table, and that is where he saw the envelope. Ned Madstone. He remembered her handwriting. From all those years he remembered her handwriting. He held the envelope to his cheek. "'Now go!' Peter's voice came through the hatchway. "'Go and never come back. You've done enough. Go!' He sat in the car and wept. Nothing for him, just the old letters. Not even a note. She couldn't hide from him. His power would uncover her wherever she was in the world. What then? Suppose he found her. What would he do then? Keep her prisoner? Force her to marry him? It was too late. It had always been too late. Ned knew exactly what he had to do. He had to go home. It was so simple, so obvious. He must go home. "'away from the noise and terror of the world, "'home, where it was either light and bright "'or cosy and dark, "'home, where they understood him, "'home, where there was peace and ease "'and gentleness and love, "'home, in every language that he spoke "'it was the best and strongest word, "'home, his Swedish island, "'where his friends lived, "'and where the ghost of Babe would come to him "'and teach him more.' He stood on the deck, looking back towards England. He let the pieces of paper fly from his hand and dart like butterflies in the wake. They came from the last century, an age when lovers wrote letters to each other sealed up in envelopes. Sometimes they used coloured inks to show their love, or they perfumed their writing paper with scent. He slowly ripped the last of them, just glimpsing down at a halved sheet. I picture your hair flopping down as you write, which is enough to make me writhe and froth like a... like a... uh, I'll come back to you on that one. I think of your legs under the table, and a million trillion cells sparkle and fizz inside me. The way you cross a T makes me breathless. I hold the back of my envelope to my lips and think of you licking it, and my head swims. I'm a dotty, dippy, dozy, dreadful, delirious romantic, and I love you to heaven." Ned let the wind whip it from his hand.